Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm just going to go over the very basics of 3D printing, how to get started, uh, what to look for, how to do your first print. So it's just a very basic one today, so we'll get straight into it. Okay, guys, before we get into it, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that'd be very much appreciated. Just click that little button down below, it costs you nothing, it helps me out greatly. Thank you. Okay, the first thing you need to do when you start 3D printing is find models. So the, the, your printer does come with a couple of um, little models included on the printer, but most people want to expand out from there. So the, the, there are a few places around you can get free models. Um, sort of, there's things like Thingiverse, uh, Creality Cloud, Printables. You can subscribe to someone's Patreon if you really like the models they do, and you'll get their um, models delivered every month. Uh, I do that for all my really big and detailed models. You usually find them on Patreon. Um, but let's have a look at something like Thingiverse. That's a nice, easy, free one. Let's type in Thingiverse. So it's just Thingiverse.com. And as you can see from here, once it loads up, there's all these models on here that you can download and print out. Now they come in an STL file, um, and that needs to be prepared for your printer. So Let's have a look at this DeLorean. And if you go down, it tells you what the licenses and stuff are here. So if you click on it, it will go into what you can do with that file. Um, and you can read through all that sort of stuff. But basically, you can share it, um, but you can't sell it. Uh, let's get back to that. OK, so there's um, a lot of times they put instructions in here about exactly what's the best way to print it. Um, you've got some comments that people have commented on, said whether it's good or bad or, or changes they make. Other ones here, they've got remixes where people have made changes to the model and um, posted it up with some changes in it. These are people's makes and these are um, files here. So have a look at that. There's one file, you just download, down, click the download file and it downloads like anything else you have in your browser. Once it's downloaded, and they're all the same, so your printables and your um, Creality Cloud, there's heaps and heaps and heaps of them around. Basically, if you do a search up in the bar here and just go STL, you'll come up, there's Colts, there's My Mini Factory, the Singiverse, they're all big ones. Um, but you go into them and you'll see lots and lots of different models which you can download. Okay, so once you downloaded your file, you'll need to open up a slicer. And I've got uh, links below for uh, the main slicers. There's a few slices around. Um, I use Creality Print because I've got mainly Creality printers and it does a better job with Creality printers. But the next big one really is Orca, which is a sort of um, expanded one from the Bamboo Labs slicer. And Bamboo Lab Slicer is a copy of an expansion of Prusa Slicer um, and Prusa Slicers from someone else as well. So they all, it's open source, so everyone uses everybody else's code. Um, there's another one called Cura as well. So they're the main big ones around. Um, there is another one, I can't remember the name of it, but I don't use it. So anyway, so once you open it up, you've got to then load in a model. So basically, once it's there, all you need to do is drag in a model. So if I grab a model and just drag it onto the desktop like, like so, and let it go. Okay, there's a little guy there. And that's the model. So what the slicer does is take convert this little picture file here that you've got your 3D model file, and it converts that into um, printer code. So the printer can read it. And basically it writes line by line by line by line by line and writes all the code about where the um, hot end needs to be and the directions it needs to go, line by line. Once you've got it in there, what you need to do, uh, in things you usually need to pick your printer. If you go into this little button here, so all of them will have printer, a printer loading somewhere. But in this one you go into here and you click on the little printer icon. You can come into the drop down box and from there, they've got an ad printer if you don't have it in the little list there. And from the ad, you can choose from the list your little printer and it will load the profiles for the printer. Okay, so I've got mine printed here, the K1C. And I can then also pick whether, whether it's got a smoother textured bed. So that's the um, 
whether it's got a rough surface, a smooth surface, or you can customize your plate, but basically they're usually rough and smooth. Okay, so once you pick your printer, you then got to come up and pick what sort of filament you're using. So I go in here and I'll see um, PLA matte, that's pretty much what I'm using, but I can pick all these ones here as well. Um, most slices have this and depending on who's usually made them will depend on what the majority of filament is for the maker. So this hyper stuff is all Creality stuff. Anything with a CR in front is Creality. And if you don't have Creality um, filament, what do you do? Um, sometimes you've got like HP there, that's sort of Creality sell that. But see all these generic ones here? They work pretty damn good as well. So I can go and get, uh, where is a generic PLA if I can find it? Yep, right there. So I can do a generic PLA. And if I want to change any of the settings, the settings are pretty good to start with. But if I want to change any setting, that's what this little button is like. It looks like a pencil is over here. You can click on that. And there's a generic PLA. And if you turn on the advanced settings over here, it will turn on um, a few more options for you. And then go in and, and alter all the different um, configuration for how you want the job to be sent to the printer. Even how fast the printer moves. Um, how much filament it goes, how much heat it puts in, how often the fans run, all that sort of stuff. So that's all in here. I'll cancel that. Okay, this is the object we're printing, which is this little guy here. And down here is more um, options. So the ones we did here were generic. And then you can go in here and make little changes to it that might be different to what you'd normally load on. So up on this top one, and like I said, they're all a little bit different, but they all have pretty much the same sort of things. You can choose how thick you want your um, your layers. Now, they, some of them do come preloaded here, and you can just pick from here. Um, or you can go into a preloaded one and just change the preloaded one. So this one here just tells you how high it lays the bit of plastic on each, each run it does. This little button here is turn on the advanced options. You can see the difference in how it increases and decreases the amount of options you have. So I found that since this latest version, which is the very latest, this is Creality Print 5.0, I haven't had to change any of the defaults for my Creality printers. Now, if I was using a different printer, that would be a whole different a different make printer. That would be a whole different um, ball game because I'd have to go and change and, and alter it to make it run on the printer I'm working. But since this is a Creality slicer working on a Creality printer, they've pretty much done it all for me anyway. But here you can tell the different heights are depending on what it's printing and um, how fast it's gonna go. So this is the line width. This is the line height. You've got um, where you want seams and stuff, whether you want it in a line or whether you want it um, staggered so you with when it's aligned you get a line in your print where that where it starts and finishes each um line, uh, row um there's a whole bundle of stuff in there you've also got other precision stuff there here ironing now ironing is something where after it's laid down a layer and it's if it's the outside layer it will go through afterwards and slowly run the print head over the top and try and smooth it out as much as possible i don't use it i don't think you really need to it adds a fair bit of time to it so I just leave it off and if I need to smooth them out the latest printers though I haven't had to smooth them out hardly at all so don't worry with that but it's an option there if you want it. you then got how, how you want the walls to run a few more uh, bridges are things like when it um, jumps from one so if you were to run filament between the legs here that would be a bridge okay because it's going from one object to the other, there's nothing underneath that would support it. There'd be a little gap here. Um, an overhang is something where yeah, anything that goes out and doesn't have anything underneath it, like this, and it's not joining onto something else, is an overhang. Okay, so all the, the, the cape, all this is overhang because it's not, there's nothing underneath supporting it. Okay, you can, you can print like that to a certain angle, but once it gets over a certain angle, the filament will fall down. Okay, so basically you're telling it here, 
um, angles and stuff that, that it can print the overhangs without putting support in. Okay, so this one here is next one is how strong you want your print. So this is the number of outside layer walls it will print on your um, model. So basically, the thicker this is, the stronger the model is. Okay, because it's you've got in this case three walls, so it's printed one, two, three, and then it starts to put infill if you've selected infill. Otherwise, it'll just be a shell inside. Then from here is basically tell you, you know, the different ways to print the walls and stuff. Here is the infill. So head here, you'd have three three layers of a wall, and then it'll be an empty void if you don't put infill in. The problem being, um, it weakens it. If you've got no infill and something taps on the top here, it's more likely to cave in than it would be if you had infill and like a support structure underneath. Okay, so the infill, it will show you what the infill does. You can see the little green lines there. So that's the infill. So the one on the left, over this side, is a sparse infill, and the one on the right is a more dense infill. So you can see how the lines are closer together. So the higher this percentage is, the stronger your model will be. The heavier your model will be, the more filament you use up. Okay, this is a pattern to use. These are what I usually use on something that requires a little bit of, so if it's a big model and it's a leg or something of a model, I'll do this, a three, a 15 and gyroid. Okay, if it's just like the head where there's gonna be no uh, weight distribution on it, it's just the head, it just sits there and you're not gonna do much with it except sit on a shelf and it doesn't need any support to hold things up. I'll make this a two and infill an eight or a five. So hardly any infill, but enough there just to give it a bit of support. I'll leave it in gyro, I think that's the best infill at the moment. Um, then you've got other things like, um, uh, if you want to fiddle around with the infill and tell it how sort of distance you want it and whether you want bits overlaying and all that sort of stuff. This one we've got speed, how fast, fast you want the printer to go. So, and all the different parts of the, the model that you want the speed to go. Um, so some of it is printing speed and other is it is acceleration from point to point where it prints. So that's what all this one is, it's just how fast you want it to go. If you do it too fast, your model's gonna look crap because it won't be able to melt the plastic quick enough to keep up with it. So you need to be within the parameters of the printer. Okay, the next one here is your supports. So if I enable supports here, um, I would have been doing something that, that didn't need a support, so basically didn't have any overhangs like this and there were no bridging to, to support. It was just a basic, basic model. Um, so basically if I had just the head, that wouldn't need support, just the head because the slopes aren't uh, very gradual and the print will be able to keep up with it. Where if I was to print this arm, they're not too gradual and it's got a print in mid-air here, so you can't do that. So if the head was sitting on the build plate, oh, let me show you. So if I was to get the head and I was to point this model. So if I was to print it like that, so just the head, nothing else, just the head. You can see the bottom is touching the build plate and it would print up, 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 and it would have something underneath it to go up onto because it's on a gradual um, increase. But if you have a look at the hands, when I come up to the hands, the thing got to print in midair here, there's nothing underneath. As you can see, there's nothing underneath the hands. You see how the hands sit and it's, there's nothing underneath the hands? Okay, so when I'm printing, Let's put that back down on the plate. Okay, so when you're printing, if it comes out here and starts printing, there's nothing for the print to print on. So you need a support to come up. So basically what it does is it builds a little bit of plastic up here. So when it prints the hand, it's got something to print on. And I'll show you that in a minute. But that's what supports are for. So if you see anything where, uh, that's just hanging in midair there, it's going to need supports. Okay, the port I use is this one here, which is tree. There is a normal one. I find tree uses up less um, filament and works, it just, it's easy to get off. And I use the slim one and I leave everything else as default. Okay, so tree auto, don't do manual. If, manual, if you do manual, it won't automatically create the support. You'll have to then go in and paint where you want support. So you want tree auto and tree slim. 
down here it's whether you want a raft now a raft is something that it lays down a bit like a, a raft in a river it's something that this model will sit on when it prints so it'll print down this this little layer and it'll stick it down to the to, to the bed and then it'll print the model on top of it and um, it will adhere better to the raft than it would to the build plate so if you've got tiny little feet like this and a, and a cape and it was a big model then you might want to use a raft to give it more more you keep it more sturdy and stop it from falling over and, and more chance of your print being good but there is something else you can use that's even better so that's what a raft is it prints a whole big clump of plastic underneath your your, your, your model like the z top distance their bottom distance is how far between the top of the support and the start of the model is the top and the bottom is how far between the bottom of the support and the bed um, you want there to be a gap if there's no gap it'll fuse in and you'll never be able to get the, the, the support off so um, the default is 0.02 and that works really well okay and this just goes through and you, you can just change the structures and all that sort of stuff of your tree I don't worry that this um, standard stuff works pretty good now the bottom here is um, bed adhesion now bed adhesion we talked about raft already uh, so that is sort of I'm not sure why it's not in this section but that's what they've decided to do Rim here now a skirt is sorry I'll, I'll get back here a skirt is just something that, that will prime the plastic as it'll just do two little um, or three little um, circles of filament around the outside of your print that's all the skirt is and sometimes people do it to just check that it's right and it's going to stick before it starts on your model so you can adjust things if you need to like the print head to the bed it's called the Z stop and you can adjust that when it started to print and sometimes you need to lower it and raise it to let it print exactly how you want it to print but nowadays it's, it's pretty autom automated but you can just do a couple little rings of filament and you can adjust and get it right before it actually starts the model so that's what a skirt does now the brim I use the brim all the time and as you can see there's different options here now the ones I use is auto and outer brim only so what outer brim only does is on the outside of the model it pr prints a thin little layer of filament but it doesn't go under the model it sort of attaches itself to the outside and it's, it's like paper thin so it's really easy to get off but that helps the model stick to the bed as well so that's what I use opposed to a raft it doesn't use up a lot of filament a lot less than a raft does and it helps glue your model to the bed um, the other stuff I don't use at the moment for standard stuff because it's it's all pretty automated nowadays um, prime towers you're gonna have to use once we start getting into color printing but that's a month or two away for Creality but uh, if you have a bamboo then you'll be using that basically it prints a little a little bit of filament over on the side when you change colors so you don't mix the colors up and they don't blend into each other so that's what a prime tower is okay so once you've sorted all this out and you've got your little model here now there's a few buttons up the top here you can use um, this one here is to rotate the model so you get all these little three-dimensional rotations oops click on it so if I use my right mount button I can move it around and just see which rotations do what and I can do holding the left mouse button when you've got to the thing you can turn it around so it in a different orientation if you don't like what you do just undo it okay this here is a auto layout so you can click on that and it can comply and basically the, the values you put in here determines how far away from each so if you've got four or five of these guys on here it will then automatically spread them around the build plate depending on your your um, your values you got here and it will spread it around so it prints and you don't have to manually move everything it'll do it for you this one here is good so that basically see where all those little lines are there that will put this bit flat to the bed so if I click on that it's going to put it in the bed if I click on the one in the back here like that one there that's what it will align with the bed okay so if I move it around and I want the feet to be on the bottom I'll just go to the feet and there that aligns it to the bed and it sits it down so it's level on the bed as well this one here is your sizing option so basically you can make them bigger here 
or you can just drag one of these and make it bigger that way or smaller um, that's how I'd get it if I want the biggest I can get on this printer I'll just keep going and keep going until see how it's changed color there gone to a dark green that means I've made it too big and that is cutting outside of the print bed so then I'd have to go in and do I'll make it a bit smaller here I'd have to go in and make it a bit smaller so it's now I've gotten no not yet I'm just yeah just got the cape okay the capes off the arms are off so everything's off sideways but you can see how the head's sitting up so I'm gonna have to pull it down in the head as well okay now now it'll fit and that's probably quite and you can fiddle around with these figures here and make it uh, 254 if you want and make it a tiny bit bigger but that's how you make it fit to your build plate okay um, sometimes they're huge and they go over and you just want to shrink them down a bit just so you can print them so that's the way you do it this one here is a mirror so basically if you do that and click on whichever way you want to mirror it whether you want to mirror it um, along the X along the Y or along the Z okay so I'll do the X and basically it's going to spin it around and if you have a look at the reality print you'll see that it's gone see how it's mirrored around now so if we go back the other way again see how it's so that's all it's doing it's mirroring the whole image this one is duplicating so I want to make a clone of that so I'll just do another one of that one so now I have two on there and the two are going to be too big so I might need to shrink it down a bit with um, this one I want to shrink that one down too so there's the two now if I was to move one now to get the move this is the move one up the top here and I was to put them on top of each other see how they're sort of inside each other here and now I use this one where I was talking about sorting before and it automatically moves it for you so now it's all lined up and you've got a plate ready to print and it's going to go by those values and move it automatically for you um, these two here are really for resin printing so basically what hollow does it's going to hollow out your print getting ready for resin so I'd ignore the um, hollow and the whole one here you can put text on here you can split now let's do split I'll show you what split does because I use split a fair bit so if I grab this this guy like we did before and I oops, wrong one. if I make him bigger like so uh, come back come back Okay, so I make it bigger like so. So I want the body to be bigger and I want the head to head. That should all fit on except for the height, right? So I can come up the split here. And here it will tell you what. So this is going to do a horizontal split. This will do a vertical split. This will do um, a Y split. And this will do on it. That's a bit of an angle one you can do. So I want to do this one here. Where it just chops it off. Yep, and I'm going to chop it there because that's the height there. And what I might do is put it right where the neck joint is. So when you do that, I like to sort of get it so that it's fairly level. So you can see exactly where the joint is. And I'm moving it around a bit so I can get it in the right spot. And then zoom it in. I'm zooming it in with the mouse um, button. See how it's a little bit high on the this side here? I want it down a little bit. Down a little. I might do it around about there. Because when I'm gluing it, that's going to be probably the best place to have it. Okay, and then what you do is you just go start your split. It's going to cut for you, so that's finished. So now what I want to, I don't want to cut it again, so it's moved down. So basically it's halving the model here. So from there it's moved down to the halve on this bottom bit. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the move. And I can move the head now and plump him on to print another day. Come back, come back. Okay, if you do lose the head like that, what you can do is come up to the directions here and just key in a direction. So I'm just going to go 0, 0, and 0. And that is the center of the plate. <laughs> so I can move that just off to the side here. I want to put that on another plate. So I can just add a plate here, up in the third button along. And it'll give me another plate, and I can plonk it on. 
get it ready for the next print make sure that's all going to fit okay so now I've got two prints that are going to print and what I might do is just get this and just let um, let's do our so I'm making sure that it's on the bottom we'll do this I'll then select that that is going to make sure it's because sometimes when you put it on you might have moved it up a bit and it's going to be a little gap there and it's going to stuff up your print more than that I'm going to do this again print that. yep cool so that's it basically when I'm doing that I'm planning it to the bottom of the bed so there's no gap there okay let's bring that down so now I've got two prints where I can print and you can see it's taken up most of the bed so it's taken up all of the bed I, might, I wonder if it's a bit over there let's spin it round so once I've got them how I want them, I've then need, need the slice it. So I've done all my settings here. I've now got as big as I can get it on this printer, unless I want to slice it again. And you can slice it this way and then make it big and all that sort of stuff. And I can do lots of stuff with it. But anyway, then you've got to slice the plate. So the plate is the plate that you've got selected. So if you want to do this one first, slice that plate. Want to do this one first, slice that plate. Or you can do all plates, but... Um, and then you try and send them off to the printers and you can select multiple printers to send stuff off if you've got more than one printer but I usually try to do it play at a time therefore I don't get confused so here's this one I've selected it I'm going to go slice plate now now you can see how it's got an error that's come up here it says the object is laid over the boundary okay so it is it's over the boundary just at the side here okay so what I need to do is move that so, it's, so I might try and auto move See if it does it for us. Nah. Okay. So what I need to do is it still trying it? No. Is do a move, and what I'll try and do is get it so I can see the model a bit better. So if I go over the top, move it over. See, I've got a little bit of room over the side here to pull it across. So if I come over this way, and if I only want to move over to the right a bit. If I click, click, click this little red arrow, it will only move it in that direction. So I can move it a bit like that and see how the error message has gone now. Now it is fully inside the plate and no error message. Now I can, and the slice button now has become active. So I can now go slice and away I'll go and um, slicing is the long part <laughs> where you're not doing anything. So it's going to go and slice and change all of this into printer code that the printer can read like I said all the um, different slices work pretty much the same way oh, excuse me you've got to set them up you have got to put them on the build plate they all have pretty much the same function because they all pretty much copy each other that's why it's open source type stuff um, and they all have to slice so you've got to change all your settings on here no matter what slice you're doing or hopefully the default settings will work that's like I said that's why I use Creality Print because I use Creality Printers and the defaults are more likely going to work on a Creality Printer than another slice is one that may have been built by Prusa or um, uh, Bamboo Labs all those sort of ones they'll be they'll have their defaults will be more in line with the printer from their factory because they know how to set it so once it's sliced you get a little file like this, so this is a preview file you can go export to load, or you can go to the Creality Cloud here and it'll upload it to the Creality Cloud and you can send it to printer wherever you want it okay so that's for if you're remote and you've got your printer at home all ready to go and you need to send it, you send it to the cloud then you'd log into the cloud and send it to your printer okay this export to local what that does is bring up sorry once it goes export to local you can see that it's got, got it down here and if I click on that button now it will come up with wherever I want to put it so I could select where I want it to go if there was a USB I had a USB plugged into a computer I'd pick the USB it would then load onto the USB you could go plug it into your printer and print from the USB there so that's how you get it to a USB or over your network if you've got it in, your printers connected up to a network um, it's pretty easy if you know how to do it once you, the first few times you do it, it's going to be a bit sort of eh. once you've you've done it once or twice um, it, it will be all easy for you okay guys I hope that helped um, if you haven't subscribed already now's the time to do it <laughs> uh, and if you made it this far you should be hitting that like button as well um, 
if you have any comments or any um, requests of videos you might want me to do um, leave a comment below and I'll try to get um, them done for you um, I'm going to do more involving um, repairing printers and stuff when you have problems with them so um, more, of, more of these sort of videos will be coming um, as well as I've got a um, Ender 3 V3 Plus coming in the next couple of weeks um, I just ordered one so whenever they decide to send it to me and we'll be doing a have a look at one of them if you're not already in the groups on Facebook there are a number of really good groups that um, are specific to the sort of printer you have so um, I'm mine are Creality ones mainly so I'm in the Creality groups I'm a, um, I help out with some of the um, Oh, what do they call me a group expert or something so basically I jump on and I just help people out so I'll leave some links to, to some of them below um, the main ones are Creality Official that's usually how they go Creality Official and then um, chuck on whatever printer you have so for the um, latest one the V3 there'll be a Creality Official Ender 3 V3 um, there's one for the store so Creality Official store that's one of the ones I'm a member of um, and there's you know one for the K1s and all that sort of stuff okay, I'm sure all the other print, printer manufacturers have something online um, but they're not as well developed as the Creality ones are and I've found that the Creality ones actually have staff in them that actually work for Creality and can get you know messages back or help you with repairs and all that sort of stuff where I haven't seen a lot of the other manufacturers with actually staff in their group they usually rely on the public to help um, with the Creality also have some forums so if you go into the Facebook forums there's stuff there they've also got a Discord channel so they're getting right into their social media so it's really good um, also every Wednesday they have a live stream where they give away prizes so I've won a, um, a filament dryer some filament I even won a, a scanner uh, a 3D scanner on their giveaways basically you put your name in they spin a wheel um, electronic wheel <laughs> and it randomly picks someone and those people win stuff um, so they do that usually every Wednesday on the Creality YouTube channel and Facebook channel um, but join me next week um, if you also think you're buying a printer from Creality or filament from Sunloo or filament from Creality I do have affiliate links down in the description below I'd be really great if you could use them it costs you no more but it just brings me a bit of commission for sending in that right direction and helps the channel out because everything I make from the channel goes back into the channel <laughs> I'm not making anything but still if I do make some money I'll put it back in um, okay guys well you have a nice day and I will see you next week bye okay guys thanks for watching I really do appreciate the support you might like one of these or one of these videos um, that I've made in the past so feel free <laughs> okay thanks guys bye